he honore, he kororea, ki te atua, tihei i mauri ora. Nau mai haere mai ki tēne whare karakia, tēna koutou, tēna koutou, tēna tātou katoa. Welcome everyone to Sunday Night Chapel, led by Clark and Dio, and a warm welcome to the staff and students of Waikato Diocesan School for Girls. Tonight's theme is etiquette. Please take a seat. The Lord be with you. Holy and eternal God, give us such trust in your sure purpose that we measure our lives not by what we have done or failed to do, but by our faithfulness to you. This we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The angels of God guard us through the night. The Spirit of God be our guard. It is but lost labour that we haste to rise up early and so late take rest and eat the bread of anxiety. For those beloved of God are given gifts even while they sleep. My brothers and sisters, our help is in the name of the internal God who is making the heavens and the earth. Dear God, thank you for all that is good, for our creation and our humanity, for the stewardship you have given us of this planet Earth for the gifts of life and of one another, for your love, which is unbounded and eternal. O oh God, most holy and beloved, my companion, my guide upon the way, my bright evening star, we repent the wrongs we have done. We have wounded your love. O oh God, heal us. We stumble in the darkness. We forget that we are your home. Eternal Spirit, living God, in whom we live and move and have our being, all that we are, have been, and shall be is known to you, to the very secret of our hearts and all that rises to trouble us. Living flame burn into us, cleansing wind blow through us, fountain of water well up within us, that we may love and praise in deed and in truth. Eternal Spirit, flow through our being and open our lips, that our mouths may proclaim your praise. Let us worship the love, the God of love. Alleluia, alleluia. Story for the night. One morning, there was a loud knock at Dr. Swift's door. The servant opened it. A man who was outside handed her a fine duck that had, that had recently been killed and said, Here's a present for the doctor. It was from Mr. Boyle. Then, without another word, he turned and walked away. A few days afterwards, the man came again. This time he brought a partridge and said, Here's another bird from Mr. Boyle. Mr. Boyle was a sporting neighbour who spent a good deal of time in shooting. He was a good, great admirer of Dr. Swift and took pleasure in sending him presents. The third, time, the third time, the man brought a quail. Here's something else for Doctor, he said roughly and tossed it into the servant's hand, arms. The servant complained to her master, that fellow has no manners, she said. The next time he comes, said the doctor, let me know and I'll go to the door. It was not long until the man came again with another present. The doctor went to the door. Here's a rabbit from Mr. Boyle, said the man. See here, said the doctor in a stern voice. That is not the way to deliver a message here. Just step inside and make believe that you are Dr. Swift. I will go out and make believe that I'm bringing him a present. I will show you how a messenger ought to behave. I agree to that, said the man, and he stepped inside. The doctor took the rabbit and went out of the house. He walked up to the, st the street to the next block. Then he came back and knocked gently at the door. The door was opened by the man from Mr. Boyle's. The doctor bowed gracefully and said, if you please, sir, Mr. Boyle's compliments, and he wishes you to accept of this fine rabbit. Oh, thank you, said the man very politely. Then taking out her, 
taking out his purse, he offered the doctor a dollar. And here's something for your trouble. The lesson in manners was not forgotten. From then on, the man was very polite when he brought his presents, and the doctor also took the hint, for he, for he always remembered to give the man a tip, a tip for his trouble. Please stand for the hymn. A reading from Colossians chapter 3, verse 12 to 13. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. Ete atua, o te tau tanga, God of compassion, boarding is not always easy. There's dishes in the sink, spreads on the bench, empty milk bottles in the fridge, all those little things that somehow become too big. Help us to be kind, humble, and patient, to bear with one another and forgive. Amen. A reading from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 12 to 13. Dear brothers and sisters, honour those who are your leaders in the Lord's work. They work hard among you and give you spiritual guidance. Show them great respect and wholehearted love because of their work and live peacefully with each other. E te atua te he para pai. God, the good shepherd, we honour and pray for our leaders, our house parents, tutors, deans and directors. Give them energy and patience. Help us all to live in harmony. Amen. A reading from Titus and Philippines. Speak evil of no one, avoid quarrelling, be gentle and show perfect courtesy towards all people. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Etiatua, servant God, you are our example. Inspire us to take a breath before we speak in anger, to take a second look and see the best in others to remember to treat others the way we wish to be treated. You lived among us a servant. You choose not to crush, but to rise up, to give rather than take away. So help us be selfless and discover their value in others. Amen.
Can we play the video, please? We haven't finished our drinks. Oh, oh, Dean says you're fair game. And you don't give a shit what your mum says. Um, listen, boys. I've had a rather emotional day. So whatever your beef with Eggsy is, and I'm sure it's well-founded, I'd appreciate it enormously if you could just leave us in peace until I finish this lovely pint of Guinness. You should get out of the way, Granddaddy. You'll get hurt and all. He ain't joking. You should go. Looking for another rent boy. They're on the corner of Smith Street. Manners maketh man. Do you know what that means? Then let me teach you a lesson. Manners maketh man, or more appropriately in this case, manners maketh the person. This quote from William of Wickham highlights the importance of simple etiquette and manners, and how they are a building block and integral part of who we are as people. Good evening everyone, and welcome, a big welcome to Dio. Thank you all for making the trip over. Tonight I'm pleased to be speaking on the often overlooked but ever so crucial topic of etiquette. A lot of you will already have an understanding of what I mean when I say the word etiquette. You'll think of things such as politeness, having common courtesy, good manners, etc. And you'd be right. However, I'd like you to think about etiquette in a new light. How it might, what it might mean to other people. How might your definition of etiquette differ from, say, your parents or teachers, or even the person sitting beside you? I think that the values and ideas of etiquette have adapted alongside our society as we have become more engrossed in the world of technology. With less interactions happening face to face and more occurring online and through social media, media, etiquette has morphed from things such as keeping good eye contact and actively listening to hearty messages and commenting on posts to stay connected. Now, don't get me wrong, I love social media and technology and I think that there are many benefits of being able to communicate and up, update people online so easily. I also think that people often forget that the same principles of etiquette apply whether you're sharing information from behind a screen or in person. It can be very easy to disregard how the person you're talking to may feel about what you're saying when you can't express emotion over text. As we are a younger generation, we are more involved with technology than our parents, grandparents, and teachers, and our definitions of etiquette are becoming more unclear. When I asked some of the boys in my dorm how they define etiquette, they said things such as being nice and having good manners or being polite. However, when I asked my mum what she thought etiquette could be defined as, she said that etiquette was having strict table manners and calling your friend's parents Mr. or Mrs. She also noted that back in her day, males would walk on the road side of the footpath and do things such as open doors and pull out chairs for women as a sign of respect. These previously common actions seem to be significantly less prominent today. Now, while she finds it quite hard to admit, my mum is a fair bit older than us students are, but thankfully this shows how as time has gone on, etiquette has been moulded to fit the changing beliefs and structures of society. While etiquette practices may change, the core principle of treating others with kindness and respect has deep roots, including in biblical teachings. The golden rule found in Matthew chapter 7, verse 12 states, so in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. This fundamental idea of considering how our actions affect others is at the heart of good etiquette. In simple terms, treat others how, how you want to be treated. I'd like you to think back over the last week or so and try to 
recall how many times people were showing etiquette to you. I can imagine few of you would have been thinking about times, I can imagine very few of you would have been thinking about times when someone said a simple please, thank you, good morning, or even just a smile. While etiquette can be as complicated as knowing the order in which you use specific utensils at a fancy dinner, it can also be very simple. Small acts like the ones I just mentioned can have great effects on the people around you, as we never truly understand how someone is feeling, and a smile can really brighten someone's day. Before I'd finish, I'd like to leave you with a short quote and a little challenge. The quote goes, no matter how educated, talented, rich, or cool you believe you are, how you treat people, sorry, how you treat people ultimately tests it all. Now, I'd like to challenge you. This week, be conscious, conscious of how you're treating other people. Make an effort to brighten someone's day with a compliment or open the door for someone when you usually wouldn't. We, as a society, are going nowhere if we can't understand the importance of basic etiquette and manners and how large of an effect it can have on people. And remember, if all else fails, a simple smile does go a long way. Thank you. Please uh, let us pray. Heavenly Father, guide us to act with grace and respect in all our integrations. Grant us wisdom to honor others with kindness and humility, reflecting your love and our behavior. May your manners be a testament to your peace. Amen. We now have time for silent prayer and reflection. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we pray together in Te Reo. E tō mātou, nā tō i te rangi, ki a tāpū tō i ngoa, ki a tāi mai tō rangatiratanga, ki a me te tau e pai ai, ki runga i te whenua, ki rite anō ki te rō te rangi, pō mai ki a mātou ai nei, e taro mō mātou mō tēnei rā, mūroa o mātou hara, me mātou hoki e mūra nei, Ki o te honga, te hara, te whanu whakai. Aua hoki mātou ki aue whakai mātou. Ngā re whakarongia mātou i te kino. Nō hoki te rangatiratanga, te kaha, me te kororia. Āke, āke, āke. Amen. I will lie down in peace and take my rest. God alone, do I pray. Let us bless the earth maker the pain bearer and the life giver. Lord, it is night. The night is for stillness. Let us be still in the presence of God. It is night after a long day. What has been done has been done. What has not been done has not been done. Let it be. The night is dark. Let our fears of the darkness of the world and of our own lives rest in you. The night is quiet. Let the quietness of your peace unfold us, all dear to us and all who have no peace. The night heralds the dawn. Let us look expectantly to a new day, new joys, new possibilities. In your name we pray. Amen. Kia ora tifano. good evening everybody, uh, and again I'd like to just add my words of welcome to Waikato Dyson School for Girls and of course your staff tonight and uh, your students, particularly acknowledging the three, Sophie, Hannah and Hannah, who actually stepped up and led us with karakia and scripture tonight as well. Thank you to you and a warm welcome to friend and colleague Stephen, Stephen Black, chaplain of, of Dyer. Good to have you with us tonight. Thank you, team. Uh, a timely reminder about manners and etiquette, not something perhaps we talk a lot very often. We do complain about it a lot, and we often say things like, what's the magic word? Especially at tuck shop, 
or in the lunch queue, when people are serving food and a range of other activities across the school, certainly here at St. Paul. So a good timely reminder, as I said, around um, how we use our language and particularly how we acknowledge others with respect as well. That great connection there with Matthew 7 from Louis, the golden rule we call it. The golden rule, it's called the golden rule because it's found in a written form in the texts, the sacred texts of six major world religions, including Christianity. How you treat others, treat others as you want to be treated yourself. It's a really, really valid and important point. Some good take-homes in that call load tonight, stuff for us to think about. And of course, we've had that challenge, that willow laid before us by Louis tonight. Think about our manners, our etiquette, how we treat each other with respect and courtesy in the week ahead. So. Again, my sincere thanks to Louis and the team, to Sophie, Hannah, and Hannah, Ollie, Liam, Jim, James, Jackson, and Pedro. Kia ora. Thank you, team. Round of applause. Good job. <laughs> awesome. Okay, now we're going to share to Langamaria to add to the peace of God with each other. Um, we do this as a boarding community every Sunday night when we gather in chapel. Tonight, of course, is our last opportunity for 2024 to do this. This, for us at St. Paul's, is our last Sunday night chapel service. So for those in year 13, particularly poignant tonight, the last time you will pray formally, Lord, it is night, that wonderful prayer that so many of our own collegians speak about when they gather 10-year reunions, 20-year reunions, whenever it might be. It's one of the, one of the things of chapel they remember the most, that wonderful prayer and tonight for some of you you've said that for the last time here in this whare so uh, a poignant moment uh, one of the first of the last as it were during the next next few months as you prepare to depart St Paul's and into the into the world beyond so we'll share this telangamaria with each other an opportunity to greet each other share a handshake of course tonight we're going to be uh, not so much amongst ourselves as boarding communities, but row by row to the side of us, we're going to be people we don't know so well. So it's an opportunity to show some good manners and some etiquette and to, to greet one another with a, with a hello and a good evening and a welcome. So that's a two, please stand. So may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And let's share with one another a sign of God's peace. Telling Amalie Atua. Without the popping, please. We don't need the hand popping. It's a handshake. Kia ora, thank you. So there is some refreshments after the service. Uh, Mr. Hardman will talk to that uh, at the conclusion of the service, just to share words about how that will work. Okay, F sang the first hymn, pretty good, pretty average, considering it is the last Sunday night chapel for, for the year for boarders. So let's see if we can just, without shouting, but singing well and lustily, our last hymn for this evening. Of course, it's our school here in Jerusalem. Thank you, Mr. Wise.
was the last one of the year. I'm going to invite Reverend Stephen Black, chaplain of Waikato Dio, to give us the blessing. Matamari a te ato e kurinei e tai a te fakaro e tiaki o kauta ngaka o kauta hingaro iroto i a karaiti ihu a kia mau kia u hoki kia kauta te manaki a te ato a kaharawa e te matua te tama a te wairo a tapu ai nei a ake tonu atu amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you, remain with you, those you love and those you struggle to love, now and always. Amen. Let us conclude our service by saying together the words of St. Paul's Grace in Te Reo and in English. Kia to, kia tato, kato, te atua, te tato, a riki, a ihu, kirati, me te araha, o te atua, te tipe pinga, tangitanga, ki te wairo tapu, ake, 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 amune. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, be with us all forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve one another in Christ. Kia kaha, kia hari, kia tapu, be strong, be happy, be holy. Amen. Uh, thank you, Mr. Wise.